In the previous chapter, we talked about equilibrium in general. But in this chapter, we're going to talk about acid-base equilibrium, which is kind of like a special type of equilibrium. So here's an example of a um, sinkhole that was formed by acid rain reacting with the limestone. Not super important to the discussion that we're going to have today, but acids and bases are important um, to our everyday lives. And understanding how acids and bases behave in solution will give you an, a better understanding of acid is acids and bases in general. So we have two different definitions of acids and bases. First is the Arrhenius definition, which is that acids produce H plus in solution and bases produce OH minus in solution. And this does explain a fair number of acids and bases. But then we have the Branstad-Lowry definition where acids are H plus or protons, hydrogen with a positive charge is hydrogen without elect an electron, said another way it's a proton. So a Bronsted-Lowry um, definition is that um, an acid is an H plus donor and a base is an H plus acceptor. This definition um, is probably the one we're going to work with the most in this chapter. And what's important to note about this um, definition is that there's also another definition, which is the Lewis acid. And a Lewis acid um, is even broader definition that it will include acids and bases that the Arrhenius definition will not include. Branson Lowry will not include, and then there's another definition. We're not going to talk about that one here, but I just want to make you aware that it exists. So let's look at um, strong acids and strong bases. So there are six strong acids, perchloric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, hydroiodic, nitric, and sulfuric. A couple things to note here. The ones that have hydro in their names are monoatomic ions, chloride, bromide, and iodide, okay? The ones that have ic acid contain polyatomic ions, nitrate, and sulfate. So nitrate becomes nitric acid and sulfate becomes sulfuric acid. There are several chlorooxy acids, and since there are several of them, the one with four oxygens is perchloric acid. Turns out the one with three oxygens is just chloric acid, like nitric acid and sulfuric acid. Not super important to note. What is the take-home message of this slide? The take-home message of this slide is there are six strong acids. If an acid is not one of these six, if a substance donates a proton and it is not one of these six strong acids, okay, it's a weak acid. And how, as we're going to see a little bit later, how acids behave depends on whether they're strong or weak. For strong bases, these are substances that dissolve to form hydroxide. So lithium will dissolve to form lithium plus and OH minus. So you get hydroxide in solution. Sodium and potassium the same. So 1A metal um, hydroxides are strong bases. Calcium hydroxide, strontium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide are, are strong bases. If I said strong acids, I meant strong bases. So these are all strong bases. The reason I have these a little bit um, highlighted out a little bit is these are, aren't all very as soluble in water, let's say, as these. So these are strong bases. They do completely dissociate in water, um, but they aren't quite as soluble as the 1A metals. So, you know, they can be in different lists considered differently. The other thing to um, remember about this is that if you were to look up on the internet, you might find eight strong acids because strong is a relative term. Strong to one person may not be strong to another. So, you know, it, these are the six you need to know for this course. If you find some other one on the internet, that's not wrong. It's just a definition of, you know, what's strong enough to be strong. For this class, if an acid isn't here, okay, it's not a strong acid. And if a base isn't here, it's not a strong base. Said another way, if it donates a proton, it's going to be a weak acid. And if it, if it accepts a proton, it's going to be a weak base. So let's take a look at this more in context of how you're going to see it in chemical reactions. So here we have hydrochloric acid, which you've likely worked with before, reacting with water as a liquid. In this case, 
HCl, which is a strong acid, donates a proton. Well, what is it going to donate a proton to? It's going to donate a proton to water. So H donates a proton to water, excuse me, HCl donates a proton to water, and we end up with H3O+. Notice the difference. Here there's two H's, and here there's three H's. Why? Because this H went over here. But also notice this was, I can get my mouse back, this was neutral, and now it has a positive charge. So it donates both an H and a positive charge. What's left? Well, what's left is Cl minus. An important thing to know about a strong acid is this isn't an equilibrium reaction. This goes to completion. So if in solution the um, HCl is one molar, the concentration of H3O plus is also one molar because all HCl reacts with water to form H3O plus and Cl minus. Note that there's always plenty of water present, right? Even in a one molar solution, um, there's like 50 something moles of water, 50 something molar water. So this is certainly always in excess. So this reaction will always go to completion. Now let's look at a weak acid case. Here we have H3PO4, which you may recognize as phosphoric acid. Note that phosphoric acid is known to be a weak acid because it's not one of these six strong acids. Well, what happens when H3PO4 interacts with water? Well, it donates a proton. Again, we get an extra proton on water and we get a plus charge. Here, phosphoric acid is acting as an acid and water is acting as a base. Up here, HCl was acting as an acid and water was acting as a base. You're always going to have in these acid-base reactions one acid and one base. All right, they won't necessarily be in this order, but they'll always be on the reactant side one acid and one base. There are probably some examples where you could have multiple acids and bases on the reactant side, but we're not going to talk about that. So here, phosphoric acid donates its proton to water and we get H3O+. What else do we get? Well, we get H3PO4 with one less proton. So it goes from H3 to H2. But notice the charge is now minus because when this left, it didn't take its electron with it. So therefore, it left its electron over here where this is now minus. It lost a positive charge. And when it loses a positive charge, it becomes negatively charged. The take home message here is this is an equilibrium reaction. So if you start with one molar H3PO4, you are not going to end up with one molar H3O+. Why not? Because this reaction is going to reach equilibrium where the rate of the Ford reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction become equal. Said another way, not all of the H3PO4 is going to turn into H3O+, because some of the H3O+, and the H2PO4- minus that are formed can turn back into H3O+. H3PO4, and you're going to reach an equilibrium here. So strong acids do not form equilibrium reactions. Weak acids do form equilibrium reactions. For both strong and weak acids, they're proton donors. And in this, both of these cases, water is the base because it is the proton acceptor. It accepted a proton in this case from HCl, and it accepted a proton in this case from H3PO4. Let's look at the base case, all right? In the case of a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, all right? Here we have sodium hydroxide solid, and it simply dissolves in water, all right? You could argue if this is a reaction or not, but it's certainly written like a reaction, so we can consider it that way. So here, when we take the ionic compound, sodium hydroxide, and we dissolve it in water, we get Na plus and OH minus. If we start with one molar NaOH, right, we get one mole, one mole, one molar OH minus. Now here you'd start with a solid, so you'd have to start with one mole of this and one liter of water, and then you'd have one molar of this. This is not an equilibrium reaction. It simply dissolves and puts OH minus in solution. This is a strong base. Note that metal hydroxides are generally insoluble but the 1A metals are a strong exception to that, and somewhat weaker exception, exceptions are your other strong bases, calcium, strontium, and barium. These are somewhat soluble in water, as we discussed before. 
So this is what happens with strong bases. Very much like the strong acids, this is not an equilibrium reaction. It goes to completion. Now let's look at a weak base. This compound here is methylamine. And if we were to draw the Lewis structure of methylamine, we would see that there's a lone pair on this nitrogen. And it turns out that this lone pair on nitrogen is ex capable of accepting a H+, accepting an H+, an H because um, basically that electron pair can interact with the proton. Well, what do we get? We get H2O donating a proton to CH3NH2. Now it's CH3NH3. Notice it was two, now it's three. We gained an H, but we also gained an H plus. So we also got a positive charge. So this went from neutral to this went to a positive charge. Well, what's left? After water has lost its proton, you have OH, so it has one less proton, but it didn't just lose H, it lost H+, plus. so now what's left is negatively charged. Said another way, the H leaves without its electron, so now this has the extra electron and the minus charge. Again, just like in the weak acid case, this is an equilibrium reaction where this is not going to go to completion. So if I start with one mole of this and a liter of water, I am not going to end up with one molar OH minus in this case like I would in the strong base case. Now, this is on the example I gave above, we're assuming no volume change, but if you actually dissolve that much NaOH in water, there will be a volume change. So this is very similar to the acid case, except for the weak base case, uh, we're using water as a base. The last thing I wanna point out here is the two ways water interacts. In this case, water is interacting as a base, okay? Why? It's accepting a proton from an acid HCl. It's accepting a proton from um, an acid H3PO4. In this case, water acts as an acid. Why? It's donating a proton to methylamine. So water is capable of acting as both an acid and a base, and that makes it so-called amphoteric. All right, it can behave as both an acid and a base. Let's take a look at conjugate acid base pairs. So let's look here at water interacting with ammonia to form hydroxide and ammonium ion. If we look at this, what's happened here? Well, H2O has donated a proton to ammonia. And what's left? Well, we had H2O, we now have OH, it's missing an H but it's also missing a positive charge, so now this species is negative. What about NH3? NH3 is now gain, has now gained a proton from the water. So now it's NH4, but again, it didn't just gain H, it gained H+, plus. so now the overall charge is plus, so it's NH4+. Plus. Note that these are both neutral, this is minus and this is plus, so this is you know, combined neutral, right? We have the electron being over here instead of over here, but the total charge is the same. Here, water acted as an acid. How do I know that water acted as an acid? Water acted as an acid because it donated a proton to NH3. Acids are proton donors. Ammonia behaved as a base because it had accepted a proton from water. But now we need to think about this species and this species, and we're kind of now thinking about the reverse reaction. What about OH minus? Does OH minus want to lose another proton and become O2 minus? No. OH minus has absolutely no interest in acting like an acid now. Water acted as an acid to form OH minus, but OH minus is not going to act like an acid. What is OH minus going to act like? OH minus is going to act like a base because it wants to gain a proton and go back and form water. In this specific case, it's trying to gain that proton in the reverse reaction from NH4 plus. We call OH minus a conjugate base. So the acid forms a conjugate base. It lost its proton to ammonia, 
to form OH minus. OH minus is now a base, so it's the conjugate base of the acid water. Let's look at ammonia. Ammonia acted as a base and accepted a proton from water. Once it accepted a proton from water, it formed NH4+. The NH4 plus does not want to accept another proton. So NH3 acted as a base. But NH4 plus wants to get rid of that proton and reform NH3. Specifically in the reverse reaction, it wants to give that proton to OH minus. So this wants to get rid of a proton. Things that donate protons or get rid of protons are acids. So NH3 is a base and NH4 plus is a conjugate acid. And these are so-called conjugate acid-base pairs, okay? So water and OH- are a conjugate acid-base pair, and ammonia and NH4 plus are a conjugate acid-base pair. Let's look at the relative strengths of these things in terms of the acids and the bases. So here we have ammonia being a strong enough base to take a proton away from water right? So this reaction occurs. If this was not a strong enough base, it wouldn't actually take a proton away from this. But it is a strong enough um, base to take a proton away from water. And if we look here on the scale and we find NH3, it's right here, okay, which puts it on the stronger base side. So we have weaker bases on this side and stronger bases on this side, and it's more towards the stronger base side. If we look at its conjugate acid, NH4+, right above it, it's on the weaker acid side. Notice that stronger acids are next to weaker bases, and weaker acids are next to stronger bases. Well, why does it happen this way? This is a relatively strong base, meaning it wants to take a proton away from things. Once it already has a proton and forms this, it has no interest in getting, it has less interest, let's say, in getting rid of that proton. So if this is a strong base, this is a weaker acid. Let's look at the more extreme case, okay? Water and OH minus. So water is not a very strong acid at all. You probably know that because you drink it every day, all right? But water is a really weak acid. So it's way down here on the weak acid side. What about OH minus? OH minus is quite a strong base. Why is this? Well, OH minus really wants to gain a proton. Water really doesn't want to give away a proton. So if this strongly wants to get a proton, this is what, it, what forms after it gets that proton. So after it gets that proton, it doesn't really want to get rid of it. I hope that's clear. If it wants to be, so the basic idea here is that they're opposites, which is why everything is right above its conjugate acid or conjugate base. And that's why these are on opposite sides. Stronger acids on this side, weaker bases on this side, weaker acids on this side, and stronger bases on this side. They're opposites. This is a strong base. It really wants to get a proton. Once it gets a proton, it doesn't really want to get rid of it that much. So it's a weak acid. It's a strong base because it really wants to get one. It's a weak acid because it doesn't want to get rid of it that easily. Okay, so that is basically how it works. So I think, um, because this can be relatively confusing, it might be easier to look at this as a um, series of examples as opposed to um, simply just uh, talking about it. So what I have here is the same slide like usual, except I have it as a, um, you know, so I can write on it in the camera. So here we have CH3 NH2 plus water yields CH3 NH3 plus plus OH minus. I'm asked to identify the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base in each of the following three reactions, some of which we've already seen. So this is kind of um, review, but it's also meant to be so we understand the types of questions we might see. So let's look at CH3 NH2 and what's on the other side, CH3 NH3 plus. So if you notice here, this has two H's and is neutral. This has three H's and is plus. So did this gain a proton or lose a proton? This gained a proton, right? It went from two H's to three H's and a plus charge. So if it gained a proton, an electron, a, a proton acceptor is a base. 
if this is the base, what about this? This molecule does not want to gain another proton. It now wants to get rid of that proton. Essentially, we're thinking of the reverse reaction. So if this is the base, this is the conjugate acid of that base, because now this is going to act like an acid and donate a proton to OH minus. Let's look at water. Water gave a proton to this, and what we ended up with was OH minus. It's got one less H, and it lost a plus charge. It was neutral, so it became minus. Water here acted like an acid, a proton donor. It donated a proton to methylamine. That means that it formed OH minus. OH minus doesn't want to lose another proton. It's not an acid. It is the conjugate base. Okay, notice, always on the reactant side, one acid, one base. Always on the product side, one conjugate acid, one conjugate base. Always on the top here, base forms conjugate acid, always acid forms conjugate base. Let's look at the next example. H3PO4 plus water yields H3O plus plus H2PO4 minus. Let's look at what's going on here. H3PO4 becomes H2PO4 minus. It loses both an H, 3 versus 2, and it loses a plus charge, neutral versus minus. So this acted as an acid because it donated a proton. This is now a base because it wants to gain a proton from H3O plus. It does not want to lose another proton. So in this case, this is the conjugate base of the phosphoric acid. How about water? Water in this case um, wanted to, uh, it didn't want to, but it gained a proton from H3PO4. How do I know that? It was H2O, now it's H3O with a plus charge. It gained an H2 to 3, and it gained a plus neutral to plus. So this gained a proton, or is a proton acceptor, this makes it a base. What is this? Well, this is the conjugate acid, because now it wants to re-get rid of that proton, or you can think of the reverse reaction. So acid, base. We have one acid, one base. We have one conjugate acid, one conjugate base. The acid goes with the conjugate base. The base goes with the conjugate acid. Last example here we have um, acetic acid, CH3COOH plus NaOH. Notice that in this case, it's not a reversible reaction because now we have a strong base um, in solution. And this reaction will go to completion. But we can still write what is the acid and what is the base. Well, in this case, what's acting as an acid? In, th in this case, the CH3COO became CH3COO minus. Because this is minus, it can associate with the positive sodium that is just basically a spectator ion in this reaction. So CH3COOH became CH3COO minus. It lost a proton. That makes this an acid. NaOH, specifically the OH minus, acted as a base. Remember that in solution, NaOH is Na plus and OH minus. The OH minus became H2O. It gained an H, right? It has one H here, and it has two H's here. And here it's OH minus, and here it's water neutral. So this acted as a base. Again, the sodium is just a spectator ion. It's just floating around in solution. So if we look here at this side, we have now have CH3COO minus. Well, if this is the acid, CH3COO minus is the conjugate base of that acid. And if this is the base, okay, water is the conjugate acid of the OH minus base. So we, again, have one acid, one base, one conjugate acid, one conjugate base. The acid goes with the conjugate base. The base goes with the conjugate acid. I hope that's clear. Now let's look at the next one, where in this case, we are not um, given a whole reaction. We're just simply asked for, identify the conjugate acid of each of the following. 
Well, what has conjugate acids? The base always has a conjugate acid. So this molecule, if you want the conjugate acid, has to behave like a base, all right? So what do bases do? Bases accept protons. So instead of HCO3 minus, we get H2CO3. One H, now we have two H's. Okay, what about the charge? Well, it was minus to begin with. We gained H plus, a plus and a minus is a neutral. Let's take another, let's look at the next one. We want the conjugate acid of H, uh, excuse me, of SO4 to minus. Well, it's going to be HSO4. Why? We add an H because this has to behave like a base in order for us to find the conjugate acid. What's going to be the charge? Well, we added a plus, H plus. So plus one minus two gives us minus one, which we just write as minus. NO3 minus. What do we get? Well, we get HNO3. What's the charge? We add H plus. A plus and a minus is a neutral. NH3. We add an H, NH4. <clears throat> this was neutral. We add a plus, so it is NH4 with a plus charge. OH minus. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky one, but you can just write HOH. All right. It was minus. We add a plus, so minus and plus is neutral, so HOH is neutral. But nobody writes this molecule as H HOH. Instead, we write H2O because this is just the more common way to write it, okay? All right, let's look at the next one. It says, identify the conjugate base of each of the following. Well, what does the molecule have to behave like in order to find the conjugate base? Acids have conjugate bases. Acids always have conjugate, sorry, acids always have conjugate bases. So this molecule needs to behave like an acid. What do acids do? Acids lose protons, all right? They're proton donors. So we need to write this without the H. So CO3 instead of HCO3, what's the charge? Well, it loses H plus, so it loses a charge. So we have a minus and another minus, which is two minus. Right, so if it loses a plus, it gains a minus. All right, however you want to think about it, because a positive um, ion is not going to take that electron with it, so it's like it gains an electron. Let's look at H2SO4. Loses an H. HSO4. What is the charge when it loses a positive charge? It gains a negative charge. H2, uh, HSO4 minus. H2O. You could write it this way. HO, again, it loses a, po a positive charge or it gains a negative charge. HO minus, this is more commonly written as OH minus, okay? H3O plus, it loses an H, H2O, and it was plus, or it's a plus and a minus, it's now neutral. HNO3, NO3, it was neutral, gains a minus, NO3 minus. So, this is how we can find the conjugate acid or the conjugate base of these different species without being given the entire reaction. So the last thing that we want to look at in this um, section is the acid dissociation constant, Ka. So we talked before about how these acids are in equilibrium unless they're strong acids. So Ha here, okay, is some weak acid that's going to donate a proton to water. So H donates a proton to water. We get H3O with a plus charge and A with a minus charge. We could write the Kc for this reaction. This is an equilibrium reaction for all weak acids, so any of those acids that aren't one of the six strong acids. So we can write the Kc for this. In this case, the Kc is going to equal H3O plus A minus over HA. Couple things to remember. First of all, they're all to the one, all right, because there's one of each of them. Second of all, we put the products over the reactants. And third of all, we didn't put the H2O because it's a liquid. Now this probably shouldn't be right here, okay? 
So it says for acids, we give this Kc a unique constant label called Ka. Ka is H3O plus A minus over HA. There is no difference between Kc and Ka, except for the fact that it's a special case where we have an acid, in this case reacting with water, which is very common. Okay, so we can write this Ka expression, which usually has H3O plus and the, and the conjugate um, base of the weak acid over the weak acid. So this is a Ka expression. The whole point of this slide is it's the same as Kc. You're not learning something new here. You do the same thing you did in the previous chapter. You just write Ka instead of Kc, all right? Because these values are often very small, 10 to the minus six, something like that, we use the pKa, all right, because it'll change 10 to the minus six to six. So the pKa, or the P of anything, we're gonna talk about pH in a later section, is negative log of the Ka, all right? The pH is the negative log of the H3O plus concentration. So the negative log of the Ka, it's just to make the number more convenient. All right, so you go from one times 10 to the minus six to six. It's just a more convenient number. So let's take a look at two examples here. And as usual, I'm gonna switch over here to the camera um, so we can do it and I can write on it. It says, what is the pKa of a weak acid with a Ka of 1.2 times 10 to the minus four? Well, the pKa equals the negative log of the Ka. So in this case, it's the negative log of 1.2 times 10 to the minus four. All right, and when we do that, we get the pKa equals 3.92, all right? Remember that logs are exponential. So if we have one times 10 to the minus one, the log of this is gonna be minus one. What power do I have to raise 10 to? Minus one. The negative log of it's gonna be one. If I have one times 10 to the minus six, the log of it is gonna be negative six, right? What power do I have to raise 10 to to make this number? And the negative log is gonna be six. So the difference of a pKa of one versus a pKa of six is five orders of magnitude, right? These are very, very different. So these are an order of magnitude scale. Just a brief review of what a logarithm is. All right, let's take a look at the negative, uh, the next example. It says, what is the Ka of a weak acid, HA, if the equilibrium concentration of HA is 0 0.0991 molar, and the concentrations of H3O plus and A minus are 9.00 times 10 to the minus four molar? And then it asks us, what's the pKa? Well, in order to find the pKa, we gotta start by finding the Ka. So remember that Ka is the same as Kc. So let's write the expression for Ka here it's gonna be the concentration of H3O plus, the first product, times the concentration of A minus, the second product, divided by the concentration of HA, the reactant. Note that we leave water out of here because it's liquid and we leave liquids and solids out just like we did in the previous chapter. So now we can plug in because in this case, we're given all the values. Well, we know H3O plus is nine times 10 to the minus four. We know A minus is also the same, nine times 10 to the minus four. And we know that HA is 0.0991. I'm leaving out molar, molar because the Ka is, are usually reported as unitless. When we do this, we find that it is 8.17 times 10 to the minus six. So this is the Ka, but it asks us also, what is the pKa? Well, just like in the previous question, the pKa equals the negative log of the Ka. So this number is a little bit um, bigger. It's actually quite a lot bigger than one times 10 to the minus six. So we would expect this number to be closer to five. So when we do that, we take the negative log of 8.17 times 10 to the minus six. And when we do that, we get 5.088. Remember that it's a negative log, so this would be negative 5.088 um, when you plugged it into your calculator, and then you just have to read that as a negative number. So it's the negative of the negative, which is a positive. So I hope this gives you an idea of both Ka 
as well as determining conjugate acid base pairs and identifying acids and bases in these equilibrium reactions.